Hey, it's Derek from CG Shortcuts, and today we're going to do this. We're creating a 3D scan model in Cinema 4D and Reality Capture. Today we're going to be looking at Reality Capture. Reality Capture is a state-of-the-art, all-in-one photogrammetry software solution which automatically extracts beautiful and accurate 3D models from a set of ordinary images or laser scans or video. It's also incredibly easy to use and learn. Visit the link below to get it for yourself. Firstly, let's talk about choosing what to scan. I chose this little flower house. It was my neighbor's, so I asked them if I could borrow it for 3D scanning, and they were like, what? The reason I chose this object is because it has no reflective surfaces, it has lots of good texture, it has great color contrast, it has something that I personally could never model. It's also small enough that I could position it so that I could move around it easily to capture it. The software will let you capture entire buildings and landscapes, but as a beginner, I suggest starting small and simple and working your way up. To capture your object, you can use a video or photos. I use photos with my Google Pixel 4a. I tried with the video, but it lost focus some, and the video isn't as high res as the photos are. So when taking pictures of your object, keep in mind that you cannot take too many pictures. The more data you give the software to work with, the better the result will be. I took 50 pictures in a circular pattern around my object. I did one loop with a wide angle, and then tighter for more detail, and then lastly from above. Take note of any concave surfaces your object may have. Try not to do anything too complex with a bunch of holes or anything like that. One thing I did not do was do a lower angle pass so I could get what was underneath that overhang. And I'll show you what the consequences of that were. Next, we're gonna open up Reality Capture. One thing that's really nice about this software is that it's actually really easy to get started for new users. It has this wonderful help platform with all kinds of helpful guides and workflow tips and tutorials. So I suggest starting with the quick start. It's actually really easy. You can choose to import individual photos or you can import an entire folder at once, which is what we're gonna do. So let's choose that folder that has all of our photos in it. All right, cool. Now let's go ahead and change our layout because right now we're not seeing the impact of anything we're doing. We can choose layouts either up here or over here. And I like to choose the one plus one plus one layout because that lets me see all of my photos that are brought in. I have my 3D workspace here and then I still have my help guide here. I recommend using that layout for yourself, but for this tutorial, for screen space purposes, we're just gonna go ahead and use the one plus one layout instead. Now that we have our photos in here, we could go over here and hit the start button, and that's gonna go ahead and automatically align our images, create our model, and texture it for us. But we wanna control each aspect of that individually, so first we're gonna go over here to the alignment tab. Now you can align your images, you can do things such as set up control points, you can define distances, if you have markers in your scene, you can tell it exactly where the markers are. So let's go ahead and hit align images. We're gonna let that calculate. Now that we've aligned our images, you see we've created this point cloud. So if you hold left click, you can move in and out, in and out and pan. If you hold the right click, you can orbit around your pivot point. If you double click with the left mouse, you can now pivot around that point, it will update your pivot point so you can rotate around that. So you see we kind of have this nice ghost image of our house, which is a good indicator that we have enough data there that we'll be able to create a 3D model. You'll notice we have all these white dots around our scene, which is actually the point reference from where the photo was taken. So it tries to stitch where you took the photo in reference to your object. So that's a really cool way to see how it's building your scene. So you have lots of options here. You've got constraints such as defining distances and detecting markers if you need things to be to scale. This is very helpful. You can just click these and then do these in the scene and they work really well like guessing from the point cloud data where the actual ground planes are and things like that. You also have the ability to analyze things. You can have selection tools. You can export the metadata and the point cloud if you want to. You can import in ground data like GPU coordinates, flight logs, whew, all kinds of things from your drones and cameras and all this kinds of stuff. This is a beefy, beefy software. We're not gonna worry about that because all we really need to do is now move over to the reconstruction tab. Under the reconstruction tab, we have the option to create a, calculate a model. Default is normal detail. You can do a preview, which is a low quality model. You have a high detail model, which will create a super high poly model. You also have settings where you can create them individually. You have the color and textures. You have alignment, selection, tools, export, and import. So first, 
what we wanna do is create a model. Now, the first time I did this, I created a high detail model because I thought that's what I need. What I didn't understand was how high high detail was. I mean, it was a ton of polygons to the point where my viewport in Cinema 4D wasn't working at its optimal speed. So then I ended up, I was like, well, maybe I can get away with just normal detail. And actually normal detail worked really well for this model. So let's go ahead and just click normal detail. So that's gonna use all of our point cloud information and actually create a mesh from that. So that took about five minutes and you can see already that we have this 3D mesh of our scene. It's all white, there's no textures on it or anything, but you can already see all this detail that's just built in from the photogrammetry. So you can see just from 50 photos, we have an incredible amount of detail. You can already tell that creating 3D assets with this is gonna work really well. So we have all this floor and the center blocks and the wall back there, but we actually don't want any of that. We wanna focus on our little flower house here. So what we need to do is constrict what we want to actually have in our scene. So let's go ahead and set the reconstruction region. Go to set reconstruction region. Go ahead and click that little twirl down set region on reconstruction so now what we can do is we can just click here we'll go behind our scene click there rotate around we'll click here and then we can go ahead and just raise that up so now you can see we've encompassed oh see how we left a little bit of that off easy to adjust pull that out make sure that we've got the bottom down just a little bit we want a little bit of this bottom there we go. So now we have a nice render region set up around our object. So now that we have that selected, let's go ahead and say normal detail again. And what this is going to do is it's going to recreate that without all the extra stuff. It's possible you could do this before with the point cloud, but I think it's helpful to see the mesh to make sure that you get it all included. So now you can see the only thing we have actually modeled in our scene is what we wanted to have modeled. All of that extra stuff, the ground, the steps, it's all gone now. So we don't have to worry about deleting that in Cinema 4D or anything. We can just take it out now before we even export our model. If you notice, you'll see that our object is kind of floating in the air because it was stacked up on some cinder blocks. Let's go ahead and move that object down here to the ground plane because if we brought that into Cinema 4D right now, it would be floating up in the air, which isn't the end of the world, but we can go ahead and make things simpler for ourselves. What we're gonna do is go up here to set ground plane and we can just grab our axis here and just slide that down till it's on the ground. And if you really want to, you can rotate that so that it's nice and flush, which is just gonna make things easier for you. So that's pretty good. That's gonna be good, it doesn't have to be perfect, but now we have our ground plane on our ground. So that's nice, just unclick that. Next thing we can do is go ahead and hit texture now we have our object on the ground, if we take a close look at our object, it looks like there's a lot of little bumps and things, which, which actually probably aren't there on the actual object. So here's what we can do. Under the, the tools, we can say clean model. Let's just go ahead and hit clean model. It's kind of like an auto cleanup optimized kind of option. And then, there you go, it just took five seconds and you can tell it kind of cleaned up some of our scene a little bit. Now, another thing we can do is say simplify which will reduce the number of triangles in your selected model. So go ahead and click the simplify tool and you'll see it pops up a little window down here and you can type in the target triangle count you want to for your model. We're gonna leave it at a million for this. If you need to do a lower count for a game asset or something, you can enter that in there, but keep in mind the lower the count, you will lose detail in your object. We're gonna keep ours at a million and then we're gonna go ahead and click simplify. That looks good. Okay, so now what we can do is do our smoothing tool we can smooth down rough surfaces such as up here. So let's go ahead and click that. The smoothing tool open up here. You can adjust the weight and the iterations and go ahead and hit smooth. Just at the default settings, you can tell it really helped smooth out some of those rough spots that were a little too jagged. Now we have our detail is still included, but we also have a little smoother result. So that's a really nice, easy way for us. We didn't have to go in there and clean that up manually. So now we have our model looking pretty good. We can just check topology to make sure there's no weird things going on. Nothing's inside of itself or anything like that. Perfect. Also, you can close holes if you have or anything like that. Really cool. You can check the integrity so you can see if there's any corrupted files or anything before you move on to the next step, which is perfect. So now that we have our model simplified and cleaned up, but it still has a lot of high detail, we can go ahead and click texture. And this is gonna basically take all of those photos 
and remap them back onto our object and create a UV map for us. Now I will say the UV map is very high res and it's broken up in a way that's not gonna make it super easy to manipulate and post. Voila! So now that that's textured, you can really see that this looks incredibly good. All that texture just applied perfectly. Our model is looking fantastic. It looks a lot like the photo references. Everything is looking really, really good. There's a lot of detail there for such, you know, an easy, quick thing. Now, if you notice, if you look up here, we've got some weird blurry bits here. And that is because I forgot to take an angle from below this lip of my photo. Now, if I had just done one more pass where I'd taken photos at a lower angle, all this detail would be filled in. So keep that in mind. If you have something that's concave or has a lip, you need to make sure you get that in the photo. But this is looking really, really good. So now we're actually ready to bring it into Cinema 4D. So let's go ahead and go to export. We can export a render, we can export a video. If you have like a fly through, you can do all kinds of stuff. If you have like a photo scan of like a valley, there's all kinds of things you can do. You can do a depth mask, you can do the reconstruction region, you can export a level of detail. We're just gonna export a model. So this is gonna export the mesh. So you have the option of OBJ, polygon files, XYZ point clouds, Alembics, you know, all kinds of files are supported. Uh, I suggest using, you also can do just textures. Uh, OBJ is a good one, it's a classic. It works for a lot of programs and it works well with Cinema 4D. So we're gonna go ahead and say object and save. Right, no spaces. And it'll go ahead and correct that for you. So to export, we can double check our settings if we need to and hit okay. If you open up that file in Explorer, you'll notice that we have our use this one for tut material. We have use this one for tut obj and we have the PNG of our map here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab this obj, click and drag that into Cinema 4D. But I believe the scale was set to meters inside by default. So go ahead and hit okay there. Boom, there's our model. So you can already tell it looks really nice. We're gonna rotate that up 90 degrees by holding shift and rotating that. So it looks kind of funky and gray. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna use redshift into this. And so we're gonna go create redshift material material. Double click that material, open up a texture, pull that in, go ahead and open up this texture and we're gonna load in this use this texture map that is the same file name as the object itself. Bringing that in, it's gonna take it a second because it is a very large file. Using Redshift, we're gonna make sure that we have the gamma override enabled and the sRGB for color information. Go ahead and drag that into the diffuse and diffuse color. Now we need to set the reflection of our object. So we're gonna go into our RS material here and we're just gonna go ahead and turn the reflection down real low and the roughness up really high. Now we're gonna drag and drop that on our object. Cool, now you can see it's a little more bold and we can see what we're dealing with here. Next, we'll add a light to our scene so we can do area light. We'll go ahead and bring that up and rotate that over so it's looking at our object. And we can go ahead and pull up the render view so we can see how this is looking dynamically. So you can see already our object is here. It's textured, it's getting affected by these lights nicely. We'll turn our light down to about 10. And you can see we can rotate our object around and it looks really, really good. That is crazy how good that looks. One thing to keep in mind is I filmed my object when it was in a nice overcast day. So there's no harsh shadows or anything. If you're filming your object and there's a lot of harsh shadows and details, you're going to need to go into all of your photos and mask correct them so that they're a little less contrast. You want it to be as flat of an image as possible so that when you bring it into Cinema 4D and you apply lights to it, that they react correctly and they don't have that pre-light bake texture effect in them. So keep that in mind. Just throw a couple of lights in, add a reflective floor, and you have a really nice clean render. And if you look at the shading lines, you can see this is still a very high poly model. You can see the topology of this. It's so detailed, it's really nice, but the viewport, Cinema 40 S24, still rolling really fast. But there you go, that's the workflow. From 50 photos, we have this really nice, super high poly model. It's actually not even, not even, this, see, that's what I'm saying. This isn't even the high detail. This is the normal detail and simplified and smooth. The high detail is insane. So normal detail will probably get the job done. 
keep that in mind be sure to get inside of areas that you need so you can go outside take about 50 photos with your phone of your object looping around it and then bring it in export it out make it a scene make it an asset ready to use in cinema 4d uh, also you can do this software is crazy it can do drone information it can do entire buildings it's not limited to just recreating objects it can create entire environments so this software super awesome check it out we've just scratched the surface of what this thing can do so hopefully uh, you can have fun and enjoy creating your own assets from photos i created a little hillside and added some grass to put my little flower house to kind of give it a home hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial and you can get out there and get your own copy of reality capture as you can see, Capturing Reality is an incredibly powerful tool. So let's talk about pricing real quick. There's a couple different plans that have different values of PPI credits. And just so you know what you're looking for and how many credits you're gonna need, they have a PPI calculator. So what this is pay per input. So basically what you do is you can have the use of the software for free and you pay for calculating your model and your mesh and stuff like that. And then you will own the rights to all of the data you put in there, like all your photos, all your all the stuff that you created and brought in there, you're that to license your inputs. You can share, copy, reprocess and distribute them all you want. So if you have like, so let's say we had 50 images, let's say each of those images were 21 megapixels, it would have cost me 66 cents to have this flower house made and created. That's pretty cheap, that's pretty awesome. I have more information on that as well as well as ideas on how to use it for your business and frequently asked questions and of course you can also contact them for more questions for your business and what's right for you also be sure to check out their free sample data sets that they have that you can use for free that way you can see how things work and play around and backwards reverse engineer things they've got all kinds of cool stuff you've got full body scans drone imagery ground control points laser scans so you can see how all that stuff works and what their input actually was for that project so you can actually see what you need to do to create the same kind of thing this flower house will be available for you so i know you're looking at your render and you're like what does this need and use this flower house so you'll be able to download that in the free sample data set as well all right see you guys next time thanks for watching let me know what you want to see in the comment section down below or you can leave a like or dislike and don't forget to subscribe and click on that little bell icon for more videos and free stuff. There's loads of extra resources on our website and you can win epic CG prizes in our monthly challenges. Check out cgshortcuts.com for more details. Catch you next time.